in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah it is the justice of God that takes sinners to hell. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That means if you don't reap what you are sowing, God is being mocked. Are you listening to me? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that man will receive it. He said, he that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. You can choose today to pay the price and sow seeds that will, the Bible says, and Abraham was old, Genesis 24, and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. Our parents left curses for us. Many of us are victims of the carelessness of the generations that have gone ahead of us. But you must take responsibility about your life. Otherwise, things will not change. This is why God brought you here tonight. As an indication of your desire to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming your destiny. And let me tell you something. The kingdom of God operates in a reward system. You will not seek God and later run back and seek other things. As you seek him, they will follow you. God will be unjust if you have to seek him first and then run back to catch up in bringing other things. Uh -uh. As you seek him, those things that men follow will come to you. So open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. This is what God is asking you to do tonight. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah bless you greet one another tell them lectures continue hallelujah bless you be seated if you don't have a seat stand or sit on the floor Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David. Hallelujah. You know, as I look at everyone here, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining. If God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like, how your 10 years some of you are escaping some things forever satan notwithstanding
Look, it pays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing, one thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies a very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success that lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm there are those who are called the elites in this earth realm those who know there are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite hallelujah and tonight I trust that the word of God will provoke you. Make sure you write. Please, if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor. And he told John, he said, write. Although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science bigger than philosophy bigger than common sense I want to show you a, a not a mystery but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the spirit see I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life it will be programmed automatically to be successful you can't undo it again even if you want to do it hallelujah in chemistry there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions once they happen they have happened this is what is happening to your life there is an irreversible spiritual reaction hallelujah you will become something and then when you become it those who are running helter skelter will say but this is what we've always wanted to become and god will say go and join the king Bishop talked of a 75-year-old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you so you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, oh God, you jump this, 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 go back many people will go back the bible says is the thief that follows through the window is that in your bible hustling can help you jump through the window is that true but life will bring you back i tell you may it not happen when you have children because they will go back too with you and as you are moving they'll be saying daddy why Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again he said in the days of samuel when the word of the lord was cast may you be the light when darkness comes upon men and that light will make kings to come to your rising gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising like sheba they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today and Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable 
she had to sail by sea and come to test him the entire kings of the earth came together solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom i pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night hallelujah thank you jesus let's write a few things what does it mean to be successful in the kingdom it's important that we understand the biblical concept of success I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success but we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things say after me I received this dimension of wisdom say one more time I received this dimension of wisdom grant us this wisdom oh God grant us this wisdom I'll give you two definitions the definition of success in the kingdom number one it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to his nature and principles the first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car not a house not jeep wrong parameters in Jeremiah 9 23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength hallelujah he said but let him that glory and glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me the knowledge of God to the degree to which you know God and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles you are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom so number one growing in the knowledge of God the Bible says grow in grace and in the knowledge of God grow in grace and in the knowledge of God Paul was speaking to the church he said my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you until the nature the character the formation of Christ so that you become a visible manifestation just like Jesus the Bible says in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily in other words he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is hallelujah number two it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life it's not enough to know God it means to experience look at me the Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation not the explanation of the sons of God there are many people who can explain success but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life the world is not waiting for explanations they are waiting for the manifestation hallelujah so success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God in how many areas success is not just about money and finance no your health your family your relationships it means to experience the blessing of God everybody say the blessing of God in your career in ministry in whatever area of your life that your life will be an example a portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things 
the biblical portrait of a blessed man is abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is elijah the biblical portrait of the law is moses hallelujah the biblical portrait of love is john the biblical portrait of faith is peter and so on and so forth may you be a portrait that represents something to the body of christ in the name of jesus christ number three kingdom definition of success we're talking about wisdom so i want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight number three it means to accomplish your life goals and your god-given assignment success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals you accomplish your god-given assignment he said my meat in other words this is what gives me satisfaction to do and to finish the will of him that has sent me he said lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will jeremiah chapter 1 he said before i formed you i knew you i called you i ordained you to be a prophet It means to accomplish your goals in life. To do and finish your God-given assignment. One more, number four. It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success, according to the kingdom definition, means to be a blessing to mankind both believers and unbelievers the bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly when your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful he said let your light so shine before men not christians before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of God exploits it means unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge this is the general definition of wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately we call that wisdom are you there accurate application of knowledge but you see the wisdom i'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition it's a higher realm mark six 
Mark 6. Let's examine this kind, this type and this dimension. Mark 6. Say after me, I receive this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? Astonished. Saying, from where had this man these things? He said, and what wisdom is this? Which is given unto him. And through that wisdom, what happens? He said that even such mighty works. I'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits. Beyond the realm of this earth. This is not the kind of wisdom you find around. The Bible says Jesus walked in that level of wisdom. And when he began to talk, they asked him, they said, from where, where is this man coming from? And what wisdom is this? Everybody say, what wisdom is this? So let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about. This wisdom is the supernatural ability. The supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions. The supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions this is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the bible and they commanded exploits the ability to use the word of god and all the inspirations that come from the holy spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says... Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart. That means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says... This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. 
the ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily earthly wisdom Sophia hallelujah number three sensual wisdom this is the wisdom that you get through study scientific wisdom philosophical wisdom wisdom that comes through studies hallelujah that's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment and then the fourth kind of wisdom the bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt. A type of Babylon. It was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used. And they accomplished super natural extraordinary things but hear what the bible says verse 17 this is the wisdom we are considering tonight he said but the wisdom that is from above come on now where is it from it's not from the earth realm i will show you that you cannot find it it does not have a physical location in the earth realm it's first pure peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you Everybody say, I receive that wisdom. Hallelujah. There is this dimension of wisdom. And there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today. Solomon in scripture. The Bible says that Solomon had an interaction with God and he was given this wisdom. And the reign of Israel during the dispensation of Solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight i pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever i pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and ellie who said uh-uh he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said, I thought that experience should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. Any kind of man. Hallelujah. Solomon was a very young boy. When he began to lead the nation of Israel. Twelve years of age. But he became a king with this mighty wisdom. And he ruled for 40 years. Twelve years. How old are you? Those who celebrated their birthdays, how old are you? But 
a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord it's a long reading let me read this is job the bible calls job the richest blessed blessed man in the east he was a great man when the elders saw him they stood up the young men saw him and they bowed their face they could not look at him what dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success read with me 28 surely there is a vein for silver that means where silver is mine has been found by men is that true and a place for gold where they refine it iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is smelted out of stone he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfection the stones of darkness and the shadows of death listen but six he said the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold it's trying to tell you what the wisdom the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish he said through that wisdom they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden they can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver that's a measure of wisdom hallelujah but verse 7 says there is a part which no fowl knoweth birds fly in the air they see things that men cannot see but he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach no matter what plane it stands to search it out it cannot see it He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bring it forth into light verse 12 are you there here's the question but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding this is a question with all the excavations that happen there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom there are houses that have been built inside the sea there are bridges that they build across seas but the bible says where is this very wisdom that with all the advancement of science men have not found it let's fast for the location of this wisdom 13 he said man knoweth not its price neither is it found where in the land of the living in other words it is not in this earth realm you cannot find it here no matter how intelligent you are this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. the depth where is the depth the deep places the places of the occult the places where they do all kinds of things that even the occultic realm has this to say it is not with me and the sea said it is not with me 
That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people, because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said, even the sea, those who have worked in abundance, who claim they have found the wisdom, all of the people that Forbes magazine is listing, the Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource they finished eating animals. They ate plants and grasses. It was remaining only human beings. And mother said, let's start eating our children. Where were the philosophers and the, with the intelligent people? There will be a replay of that. Yeah. The Bible says it in Malachi 4. That the earth will burn with an oven. And all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed. Let me tell you the truth. If you do not access this wisdom, whatever else you have are just shadows. are you getting blessed tonight the bible says 15 it cannot be gotten for gold that means you don't buy this wisdom with money if you could buy it with money the wicked wealthy men including the illuminati they will buy everything and be the custodians of it but the bible says this one even gold cannot buy it you can't buy it it's not the personal possession of any man. It cannot be weighed for silver. It is not valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx and the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies. It says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is this wisdom? That everything that men value today cannot buy it. This is what Solomon saw. And when he caught it, every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually forever. There are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion US dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the Bible says they can't buy this wisdom are you hearing me with all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments they have not been able to stop war but a 12 year old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation where is this wisdom my god i pray that somebody will get this wisdom solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but the time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air 
Abaddon, the place of the dead, and death say, We have heard its fame with our ears. God understands his way. This is the secret. He said, With all this confusion that men are having, God is saying, I know where it is. I know where it is because I kept it. And I know the place of it. Where is this wisdom? How can you access this wisdom? With this wisdom, Daniel entered a strange land. And he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings. The same result. The same result. Through the dispensation of three different kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This dimension of wisdom, we are talking about accessing this wisdom now. This dimension of wisdom only comes from God. The first thing I want you to know about this wisdom in, an, in accessing it is that it is given. Everybody say it is given. God gives men. You don't study it. You don't look for it. It's a waste of time. God gives men. Hallelujah. When you meet his conditions, he will give it to you. God gives men. Ready? Let me write the conditions for you. The conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom. Number one, you must have a passionate love for God and his agenda. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what god has prepared for them that love him not them that speak in tongues not them that attend koinonia eye has not seen ear has not heard what god has in store for who them that love him we are going to examine solomon's life very quickly before we pray because he's the biblical portrait let me teach you something every time you are searching out for something in life stop confusing yourself Go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for. The Bible says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. He said, I called him alone and I blessed him. That means as far as God is concerned, when you are talking about blessings and prosperity, Abraham is God's portrait of a blessed man. Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu. Not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father. And to Sarah that bear thee. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel. Different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure. That was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon. In chapter 3 verse 3 is that. And Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See let me tell you. Your love and passion for God. Is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service there are many people who serve God but they do not love God they don't have that passionate love they are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment you are in a family where everybody is a Christian so you have to go to church you have to come for koinonia he said and Solomon did what love the Lord that means every other thing that he did was because of that love a man can serve God because of wife I hope you know that a man can serve God because of husband 
a man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment and you just find the nearest church and say ah let me find refuge in this place and rest before I find out what is going on people can serve God for various reasons for car for house for prosperity for job he said but Solomon loved the Lord do you love the Lord the first condition for accessing this wisdom this is why the kings of the earth cannot get it because they do not love the Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord it's from the bottom of my heart I love you Lord I love you Lord it's from the bottom of my heart I love you Lord I love you Lord from the bottom of my heart see when you give God your heart not your hands not your tears when you give God your heart I'm giving you a big secret many Nigerians do not love God many pastors do not love God they love ministry they love suits they want ministry advancement but they do not love the Lord many leaders in this country do not love the Lord many young people hustlers who keep hustling forever they don't love the Lord many fathers many mothers do not love the Lord and we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us some of you here looking at me don't love the Lord you love the house of God you love the people of God you love Christian music but you don't love the Lord and Solomon loved the Lord and Solomon loved the Lord can that be your testimony that will say ah and Eben loved the Lord and Paul Maman loved the Lord some of you as you say and you love the Lord your spirit will tell you no way you say and you are now willing to love the Lord not that you love the Lord I keep emphasizing this passion for God because if you are not rooted in love success will make you run away from God are you hearing me success will make you do what let me tell you if you enter real success it's a double-edged sword it can kill you are you hearing what I'm saying there are levels the, the problem is many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like and Solomon loved the Lord that's the first condition number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing you want to access this wisdom you must have what a sincere desire to be a blessing same first Kings 3 from verse 8 and 9 God gave Solomon an open check he says Solomon what do you want me to give you look up if Solomon was a Nigerian and God says Solomon what do you want me to give you his first question will be is he only me will there be any other person with it say no only you he say ha God, you better carry paper and viral. Let me empty my whole life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two. All the people that have called me a failure, prove a point to them. Is that not true? Number three. Make those people serve me. So that forever it will remind them. Let me tell you, hear me. If that is your desire I assure you it is not God's wisdom you will ever get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get God's wisdom that way the Bible says indeed Genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who, who, who jump in church oh I'm a millionaire I tell them you can get it by by working for 50 years but i assure you if it is through the wisdom of god your heart must be ready to be a blessing 
Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people. Many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love. They are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry. I told God, if you never bless me in this life, if I never become successful in this life, I may do many things, but not loving you is not one of them. He has my heart. Believe me. I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I had Bishop Oedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry. Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, anything you pray, anything you ask me, I will give you. I mean, Jesus appears to you. The first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand. And mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything. Till five minutes to one, you will sit down and say, Lord, I'm still thinking. Okay, I remember. Do this for me, for me, for me. I trust God that in the years to come, in Koinonia, our testimony will not just be God gave me tea, God gave me bread, God gave me handkerchief, but that God used me to do this for somebody else. It is at that point we will clap. Right now we are clapping for God, change me, and we thank you for it. God did this. A millionaire is not one who has one million. A millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million. Oh God, I want this. I want fame. I want power. Give me this church. Oh God, I'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold. I want to wear the one that I'm buying. I'm, oh God, change my story. And God is saying for you, or for me, or for my kingdom. And God said, well, this, when we get to that bridge, have you heard people say that? He said, when we get there, we'll cross it. You better, God can see your heart. Everybody say, I love the Lord. And I desire to be a blessing. See, can I tell you, if you are looking for success for yourself, you don't need much effort. You know, but you know that. How many clothes can you wear? How many books can you write? But when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God. My ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I, I trust God for the oil on your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you touch me, there will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say you, for because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story. Oh God, say Amen. God said, No way. You are the one shouting amen there. Yeah. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can he have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God? And you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them. And don't announce it. 
build it, put everything and come and tell them, this was why God blessed me. You say, if I do this to you, here's the condition. It must be on newspaper. It must be on CNN. All of you must come and kneel down and say thank you. And I will give you the key in front of everybody. That way, they will now know that I'm serving the Lord. It doesn't work that way. How many of you are ready to be blessed? How many of you know that if, if you are successful today, you will give scholarships, you will build orphanages, you will build churches. Let me tell you the truth. Many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the 10,000 you have. Even your tithe, you have not been faithful. You just saw 1,000. Hey! 1,000. can buy palm oil, you can buy salt. Maggie one tier. Gary, if he's the half one, said it will reach. Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you all. As you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. The way, the way Tokumbo is going now, Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima. Say Fatima. Me. I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not set to be a blessing, I am telling you. I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing number three to access this wisdom you need to operate the law of giving first kings 3 verse 4 that's what we see in the life of solomon everybody say the law of giving any day i talk about the law of giving don't be confused let me tell you straight to the point what i'm talking about the law of giving is number one your tithe Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. Even if you give one billion for any project. If your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God to collect money from you. Because if that is it, you, you will never be successful. This is not about money. It's about maintaining an open heavens. The Bible says, bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here which saith the Lord if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. 
Oh, how much? It's just 5,000. Even God understands. Or oh, my father gave his tithe for me. All these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life. Say, I receive grace to tithe. Be consistent. I have envelopes, envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in, I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound, one whatever it is, the tithe is taken first. When we started the school of ministry, the same thing. The tithe, as I speak to you right now, the tithe for the collection of this night is already set. There were many trees in the Garden of Eden, but God kept the tithe and told man, don't touch it. Every time you take what God did not give you, he will return back with something. He will collect some, something that he had given you. Say amen. Every time, some of you, you take the tithe, what happens? He will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, you, you in your mind, you even have it in a pen. You're tied from March to now that you plan to give God, but you have not yet given. You say, God, you look at the heart. Number two, your kingdom investments. I'm talking of your offerings. I'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of God. If you have a business tight, you have a church tight, you have anything tight, tight, and you an open heavens. So your kingdom investments and then giving to God's servants, prophet offerings, and giving to the needy. These are the things that constitute the law of giving. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 4, it says Solomon offered a thousand. Everyone say one thousand bond offerings. Say one thousand. Look up. We are not up to one thousand in this place. Do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals? 800, 801, 802, 870, 900, 950, 991. To 1,000 and then they caught all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and God saw a man doing this while Solomon got to the 900 one he said Lord still for you he got to 991 he said Lord for you and he killed the 1,000 and God said no way God himself had to come down and say Solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you god does not love a cheerful giver alone god also loves a crying giver there is he that weepeth And bearing precious seeds there is he that weepeth there are some givings that you don't just give laughing you will give and cry you will give and call yourself a fool after the service how be it your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the Lord first Kings 3 verse 9 Solomon asks of the Lord Solomon asks of the Lord for an understanding heart James 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask of the Lord. Let him ask of the Lord. Tonight we are going to be asking. I told you this wisdom. See, 
this wisdom comes to you from God. It's an impartation. Solomon discusses with God in the night in a dream. The next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom. Immediately. Immediately. Daniel. Daniel. I'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray. Daniel. When the king had a dream, could not interpret it. He said, let's just rest. He rested that night. That wisdom worked. This is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time. Uh -uh. When it comes on you, it speaks at once. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom. The operation. How does it work? I've told you what it is. I've told you how to access it. How does this wisdom work? Proverbs 18 verse 1. The first way is the sacrifice of meditation. This is how this, this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression. What did I say? The sacrifice of meditation. Proverbs 18 verse 1. The Bible says true desire. A man having separated himself, seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. Meditation. Meditation. Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression. Meditation. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6. Please let's look at it quickly. I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us. Daniel 2. I cried for many years to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Daniel 2 from verse 14. Are you there? Say amen. Let's read it quickly. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. They could not interpret the king's dream. Look at this wicked king. You had your dream and you forgot and you were angry. Just like many people in Nigeria, they blame people for their failed dreams. They wanted to be great, it didn't happen. And now they are angry at everybody. Listen, Daniel said this in verse 15. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. 16, listen. He said, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him, that he should give him. This is what has killed a lot of people in our generation. We are in a rush for everything. That's why the spirit of wisdom, the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives. We are in a hurry to make money, a hurry to do everything, a hurry to get that job a hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with god we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of god to edit our lives the bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however it said many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minute let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time i will meditate and the lord will reveal to me and i will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there 
Zupa kata paria kata basham brati kata. Verse nineteen. He said, "Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, when he he had time, and he went in the night, meditating upon this thing, and during the night time, not the night moment, the night time, this thing was revealed to him." Every time you take time, see, there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life. Because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place, it will hurt you. And those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you. You see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120. The next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation this is how i get the messages for the week i spend time i pray and i just sit in his presence and allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men when that wisdom comes you know accurately what it is that god wants you to do hallelujah number two this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions is supernatural is supernatural it's not wisdom that is rehearsed all of you some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it. Luke 21 quickly. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21 verse 15. It said for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking it's not something that you have that you say i have it again no the moment you open your mouth you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm hallelujah and so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision and many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable and you keep quiet like Elihu suddenly you will open your mouth he said open your mouth and I will feel it he didn't say I'll open your mouth when I feel it open your mouth and I will feel it suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom and they look at you my father calls me a young man with gray hair ah there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak people will look at you and say no this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience this is an impartation 
of this dimension of wisdom i pray in the name of the lord jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness not wisdom or what came out was just scientific knowledge i pray for someone tonight i pray for someone tonight may god make that when you meet your destiny helper the right words that will be upon your lips that will compel men there are many people today moving around with business proposals and they know what books say they should say but the bible says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we are running Matthew chapter 10 I feel the power of God in this place we are going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking through a man that's why you wait the man and wait the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will share it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men doth not wisdom cry doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen the third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration 
that dimension of wisdom How did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness? Look at me. They were in the wilderness. There was no source of help. But they got wisdom from God. And they built the tabernacle. In the wilderness. Brothers and sisters. I can kneel down and beg you tonight. Do not trivialize the power of what I'm telling you. There are some messages until you get to certain realms. It may not be useful. But when you get to that realms, you can never be a leader without this. You will waste your time. There are many frustrated men of God who have power but don't have wisdom. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to be a leader. It takes wisdom to be a father. It doesn't take age. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to command prosperity. It doesn't take years of time. It takes this wisdom. lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something some of these great men like john muen and the rest the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom it is this wisdom that transported it there are others whose songs just came from musical acumen so it will change as time changes but there are others it comes with a spirit the wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us. So, he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners. Communicates his wisdom to us. Shiva katabalaraba. An idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate the roommate will never know that something has happened you just wake up in the morning come on now not the same person who slept i pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom i cried to god yes in my life i said lord I want you to give me this wisdom this message i'm preaching to you tonight is an old message it's an old message i'm preaching to you my experience i found this thing and i said come on lord a 12 year old boy lord i'm available give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience give me wisdom that is bigger than everything i know that wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you yet they will give you a seat among the great there are some of you this wisdom will make if you ever see your colleagues it's just because you want to discuss with them but as far as success is concerned uh -uh, it will take you to a realm everybody is far older than you they'll say how did you come this fast it takes men years to do this exploits by this dimension of wisdom through wisdom is any house built through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom 
there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth zaria is too small for you everybody is watching you but you know that what is inside you is bigger than zaria is bigger than nigeria that young man called zuckerberg before facebook went far there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for 8 billion he had not even become a millionaire then he was just they wanted to price his idea he said no i know this thing will shake the world 8 billion is too small at that level see i tell you the truth in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i'm out of this country there are some of you the bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of this earth was not worthy of you are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat i bring you a message stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry I want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart the bible says let him ask of god i have seen this in my life in a measure i can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry Zekete prekete belerererebos Manda prate katayada basa Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Shoko prote kete Thank God for your degree But get wisdom Thank God for PhD But get wisdom Thank God for books But get wisdom Shekete te poko tope that divine ability to take the word of God and translate it come on pray sister pray my brother pray for the sake of your generation pray it say Lord I always knew I'm not ordinary Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will bring for things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot eat. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitation. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. 
Say, Lord, this night kill greed and self centeredness from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray, Lord, kill it. Greed, self centeredness, take it away from my life. That mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset, you are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never access wisdom that moves. I kill self centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed depart from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed. Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness be gone from us we are the blessed ones and power to bless mankind 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 Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we will take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. 
Listen, Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding standeth up, standeth understanding put forth her voice. Listen, she stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of paths, listen. She cries at the gates and at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. This is wisdom crying, calling for attention, calling businessmen for attention, calling entrepreneurs for attention, calling ministers for attention, calling family people. Wisdom is begging and saying you have paid attention to other things can you not give me your attention there is a baptism going on in this place this night he said all ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of understanding heart hear for i speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things he said all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing crooked wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and I find out knowledge of witty inventions. Verse 14. We'll just read 14 to 16. And we'll stop. Listen. It says, counsel is mine. There is no foolishness when you walk with me. Sound wisdom. He said, I am understanding. And I have strength. Verse 15. By me, kings reign. Kings don't reign by election. Are you hearing me? By me, kings reign. This is wisdom telling you the things it has done. By me, kings reign. And nobles, and even the judges, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule. And the nobles, and all the judges of the earth. Listen, 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso Rock. they are not in London they are not in any bank I tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it fall, O oh God. Let it fall, O oh God. Wisdom from above. Make leaders with wisdom. Let it fall. Wisdom that will shock the world. Wisdom that will shock the business world. Wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world. Higher. Wisdom.
wisdom that will shock men in your career wisdom that will make your degree meaningful wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in health wisdom to command prosperity cry the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling shake it take it take it take it, take it. Take it. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Receive a baptism. Shake a poriata. Koinonia, be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia, be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia, let it fall. Let it fall. Let business moguls arise from this wisdom. Lead us. The true secret of kingdom success. The true secret of undeniable kingdom success. Shake it. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage. The day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly, you will receive. You can argue it. You can sit down there and watch others or you can humble yourself and say lord this is it this is it my spirit tells me this is it lift your hands i want to pray out of the abundance of grace that has been given i want to pray i pray that as i declare may it come upon somebody right now in the name of jesus father you gave me this message this is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover this is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom this is the true secret of kingdom success we started building last week and i want to pray i tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names at the count of three i tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way at the count of three i just like you to shout after the count of three i receive and begin to receive it in your life it will change your life are you ready now one two three lord let it fall take it take it take it take it take it take it shake it, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it a baptism, a fire, a baptism, the fire of wisdom, the fire. It comes from above. Let it change your status. The wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom. In business. Be marked with wisdom. In your job. Be marked with wisdom. 
wisdom to speak, wisdom to preach, wisdom to attract wealth, wisdom to attract honor, wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last one, but let this wisdom take you to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Tonight, as many of you sleep, I declare the experience of Solomon. Let it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, tonight let it come by wisdom. In your place of meditation, let leadership wisdom come upon you. Hallelujah. I pray for you. The same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them you knew that these were Jacob's cattle I pray for you because you have come for koinonia tonight favor has been our mark in this place but to that favor I add wisdom to you I add wisdom to you Go ahead and give God thanks. Go ahead. Thank Him. I tell you, something has happened to you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money, so God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say, I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you, receive it. Amen. Ladies, don't say we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. hallelujah listen you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord what a night that God is releasing wisdom I want to pray for you right now or you have given your heart to the Lord once but you've really found yourself distracting you, are, you have been distracted here and there the author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start Please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight and just take it lightly because God is doing great things. If you are not born again, you do not have access to this wisdom. I don't care even if you fell down. It doesn't work that way. So to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God, please leave your seat and come out here right now. Right now. If there's anybody like that, leave your seat and come out here right now. And I will pray with you. In one minute, we have people like that. Very quickly. I'll give you one minute quickly. We're out of time. Anyone making this glorious decision?
Don't be ashamed. Appreciate her. Bless you, sister. Bless you, sister. Bless you, my brother. I see you coming. Keep appreciating them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. You are encountering true wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. This is unto the Lord your maker. You will mark this day as a turning point in your life. Lift your hands and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I ask you tonight to be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and my old ways. I declare that from today I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom. From today, I am a different person in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You have brought these ones by your spirit. Change them. Let this not just be an emotional experience. Change them in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Listen. You will never lack wisdom in your life again. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Please follow the ushers in one minute. They'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow by 5 p.m. at chapel. God bless you. Thank you, sister. Please keep standing. We'll soon be out of here. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first night here in Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously. We want to bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Bless you, my appreciate them. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. This is not your best. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed today? Thank you so much. Do something with what you have received. You can be emotional about this teaching and it will never change you. But if you do something with it, no power in existence can stop it. Hallelujah. We are anointed people and we want to pray for you. If we pray for you, you are blessed. I tell you, saints of God, stretch your hands as we pray for them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. We command that you will go back with instant testimonies. You will know that God is in this place. We bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you for depth of... We, we bless you with hunger for deep spiritual things. We bless you with wisdom. You will go back with a traceable mark of wisdom in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 